Okay, this video we're going to take a look at the circulatory system. Okay, the slide here we're talking about the function of the circulatory system. The circulatory system is like the pub is like a public transportation system in a large city. So think of cars, trains, buses, freeways, and roads that move people, goods, and waste <clears throat> throughout a city. Your circulatory system does that for your body. Uh, humans have a closed circulatory system, which means that there's they have systems of vessels circulating the blood around your body. The human system consists of the heart, blood vessels, and blood that flows within. Next, we're going to talk about the heart. <clears throat> the heart is right in the center of your chest. If we take a look right here, um, it's almost all muscle, and it's the size uh, each person. If you make a clenched fist, that's about how big your heart is. So it's um, pretty much a scale to the size of your hand. Take a look at the pericardium is the protective sac of tissue that encloses the heart. So that's this area right here on the outside of your heart. The pericardial sac we see right around here. This is the pericardium. The myocardium is the two layers uh, in the walls of the heart that sandwich a thick layer of muscle that contracts to pump the blood uh, throughout the circulatory system. That's this area right here. The pericardium is the outside. Think of the inside of the uh, outer wall of your of your heart. And this is what contracts, that, that pumps the blood in and out of your heart. On average, your heart will uh, contract 72 times a minute, and each contraction will move 70 milliliters of blood each time. The septum is the dividing wall between the right and left side of your heart. So this is your septum right here. It uh, divides your heart into right and left. So think of this border wall between the United States and Mexico. There's kind of a septum between our two countries. Uh, the septum prevents the mixing of oxygen-rich and oxygen-poor blood. Now you have two chambers in your heart. So you have uh, so, so we have an upper chamber, which is the, one of them is the atrium, and the lower chamber here is the ventricles. Uh, so you have a right and a left, ventricle and atrium. The ventricle is a lower chamber that pumps blood out of the heart. The atrium is what is the chambers on top that pump the blood into the heart. So circulation throughout through the body. <clears throat> so think of it this way: we have a um, we have a, a right and left side uh, for pumping blood throughout the body from your uh, your your ventricles, and uh, so think of uh, think of Twix, left Twix and right Twix. The right side pumps uh, from the heart to the lungs. We call this pulmonary circulation. That would be on this side. When this happens, oxygen-rich blood pumps into the left side. We call this systemic circulation, and then it's pumped out to the rest of the body. So the oxygen-poor blood goes to the right side for cleaning by the lungs, and then the oxygen-rich blood is goes to the left side to be sent out to the rest of the body, so providing oxygen to all parts of the body. Circulation through the heart. <clears throat> so... The way it works in the heart, it enters through the left and right atria and exits, uh, your blood exits your heart through the left and right ventricles. So we have your, uh, your atria right here, left atrium, right atrium. This is where the blood comes into the heart from both sides and then exits from the right and left ventricles. Now there's a valve that connects the, uh, the left and right uh, ventricles to the, uh, to the atria, which is right about here. It opens and closes, so when it's when it's done with the atrium, it goes into the ventricles on this side to be pumped out to the rest of the body. So when these valves are open, blood moves from the atrium to the ventricles, and when it closes, when it's closed, the ventricle, when this these uh, valves right here, when they close up, now the blood that's in here is forced out to the rest of the body. So your heartbeat, um, think of it as a two-step pump. There's two network, uh, two networks of muscle fibers in your heart, one in the, in the atria, one in the ventricle. If you stimulate any one fiber, they contract as a unit. It starts with the sinoatrial node, which is the in the right atrium. This is what's circled right here. And it sets the pace. So it's your, your body's pacemaker. Uh, 
so what this does, it sends the impulse to the atrial ventricle node, which is down here, just above the, just above the valve. And it works as a two-step pump. So the impulse contracts the atria to pump into the ventricles. Then the impulse makes the ventricles pump out to the body. So this kind of starts it all. It sets the pace. So think of this leader here setting the pace. When it says the word, then this thing fires. So whatever blood's in here tells this thing to open, to go in here, and then contract out. Once it contracts, the blood is now pumped out to the rest of the body. And it, this happens very, very quickly. It's happening right now as I'm talking. It's happened for you as you're watching this video. Next, we'll talk about blood vessels. We'll start over here on this, this side with the arteries. Your main artery, probably the biggest artery you have, is called the aorta. The aorta is lar the larger you are, the bigger your aorta is. Um, I read somewhere that a, a blue whale, which is the largest animal that's ever lived on Earth, the aorta is four feet in diameter. So pretty much most people could, if you duck, you could walk through a whale's aorta. It kind of tells you how big their heart is. It has to be pretty big for an animal that size. So your aorta is a large first artery for blood when leaving a ventricle. So when you think of, a of the arteries, the aorta being the main one, arteries is what, what uh, pumps um, blood away from the heart. It sends it out to the rest of the body. They're, they're hooked up to the ventricles and... That's what uh, takes blood, oxygen-rich oxygen blood, to the rest of the body. Think of the, your arteries as super highways. It brings blood from the <coughs> heart to the tissue that needs it. So we see tissue, your other organs and muscles. It brings oxygen-rich blood to them. Uh, walls contain connective tissue that allow arteries uh, to expand under pressure. So when, you, when you're working out, when you're really nervous, your heart starts pumping, your, uh, these arteries, they expand to handle the pressure when you are stressed out. Now in the middle here, we take a look at the veins. Veins are what brings uh, blood to uh, the heart. Um, the, when it, when they go, when the, when the arteries bring the blood throughout the body, the tissues and muscles use uh, the oxygen-rich blood. And when it's done, it pretty much it, it's um, think of it as it's not as charged up. It's it's got waste. It's it's, it's very oxygen uh, poor, and it needs to be charged up back by the heart and the lungs. So the veins are going to bring back that, I guess you can say, uncharged up uh, blood back to the heart to be cleaned by the lungs and more oxygen pushed back in. So when it's done going to the tissues, it goes through capillaries from your, um, um, from the, that work as, uh, think of bridges between your, um, your the, the veins and the arteries. And as it goes through the capillaries, it's taking all that waste and everything, all the oxygen, poor um blood goes through the capillaries back down the veins which will then make it travel back to the heart so think of the capillaries as a maybe as a waste management system the capillaries and veins the capillaries collect the waste and the veins take everything back to the heart next we'll talk about blood pressure so um, <clears throat> blood pressure happens when your heart contracts. So the contraction produces a wave of fluid pressure in the arteries, and it decreases when the uh, heart relaxes. So when it can, when blood is, is forced out of the heart, the pressure goes up. When the heart relaxes, your pressure goes down. So if you have no blood pressure, it means your blood will stop flowing, and pretty much you're going to die. So how do we measure your blood pressure? It's called a sphyg sphygmomanometer. Funny word there. So try it again. Sphygmomanometer. This measures your blood pressure when you go to the doctor. It's this this is a machine you see right here with, with a cuff. They wrap it around your arm and they squeeze it and they use that to measure uh, your blood pressure. So you have two types of pressure. The first one is called systolic. Now systolic uh, is the force felt in the arteries when the ventricles contract. So when it contracts is when the ventricle is pushing the blood out your body. Diastolic pressure is the force felt in your arteries when your ventricles relax. So when the ventricles are relaxed, when it's allowing blood in, it contracts when it forces blood out. So the systolic pressure is how much how much force it is when the ventricles are pushing the blood out. Diastolic it pressure is, is the force felt in your arteries when the ventricles are, are relaxing and letting blood in. A typical blood pressure reading is 120 over 80. Uh, so the, the first number there, the higher number should be your systolic pressure, and diastolic pressure is the lower number. 
Next, we'll talk about diseases of the circulatory system. One of the main diseases here is called atherosclerosis. Big word there. Try it again. Arthros atherosclerosis. Even hard for me to say. This is the condition when fatty deposits build up on the inner walls of your arteries. So fatty deposits are caused by the food you eat. So if you have all this lovely food here, hamburgers, pizza, fries, hot dogs, soda, anything high sugar, hot Cheetos, all that all that stuff contains stuff that will build up fatty deposits in the inner walls of your arteries. So what does this lead to? It leads to something called hypertension, which is another way to say high blood pressure. Um, you have uh, this condition if your, your uh, blood pressure reads at a ratio of 140 over 190. It says we learned in the last slide, 180 over 120 for your systolic over diastolic pressure is average. But if it goes, if your systolic pressure goes up 20, uh, <clears throat> goes up 20, and your diastolic pressure goes up 10, you've now been diagnosed with what we call high blood pressure. This means that your heart pumps against greater resistance. This means that your part has to work harder to get blood out throughout the body. So think of it this way. Um, your, uh, think of your, your, your arteries need to be clear, nothing blocking, but those fatty deposits make your, your, your arteries, the, the, the area, the canal for the, the blood to flow through, it's thinner. So it takes longer for, it takes more, more effort on your heart's part and it takes it, your blood longer to get to where it needs to go. And this, this can uh, increase the risk of a heart attack or a stroke. Now a stroke is when blood clots form due to arthrosclerosis. They break loose and those fatty deposits end up get, uh, flowing through your arteries into your brain and it, it builds up and it causes a blockage which means that blood can't get to a certain part of the brain, uh, of your brain, and that brain part of your brain can be damaged. Uh, people who have strokes on certain parts of the brain, for example, could if it goes into a part that uh, affects your ability to walk, then you can't walk. It may affect muscles in your face, so maybe half of your face, you can't control it. You can't speak. Uh, for example, there in the bottom right corner, you see a picture of my grandparents. On the left, you see my grandfather, who died at age 80 back in 1997. He had a heart attack. <clears throat> excuse me, he had a stroke. And what had happened, you know, he had one of those fatty deposits that was building up in his arteries. Um, it broke loose and flowed up toward his brain, and it, it affected the part of his brain that um, controls the left side of his face. So half of his face would just sat there all dead. He can control the right side, and he was drooling out of one side, and, you know, it's uh, it was very hard to see. He, he couldn't really control it. Sometimes your, uh, your brain is restored, that part, and you, you can get full function of that part of your body again if, the, if, the, if it heals. A lot of times you, uh, people who have strokes never really recover from it. Now a heart attack is when your heart muscle is damaged. Um, a heart attack happens, again, when uh, the block is due to um, atherosclerosis causes your heart to die from lack of oxygen. Um, this happens when you have pretty much too much, when you can't get that oxygen-rich blood back into your heart, and your heart is is being damaged, and usually you know you're gonna feel pain in your chest, you feel shortness of breath, you feel nause, you feel very um, nauseous, you feel like you want to throw up. Uh, a lot of times, this is accompanied by, you know, pain shooting down your left arm, will uh, be a sign of a potential heart attack, and then from there, a stroke a, a lot of times is not too far off. So some tips to uh, prevent this from happening to you. One would be obviously to improve what you eat. So tips to avoid this disease, exercise, balanced diet, avoid smoking. Exercise makes your heart stronger and reduces stress. Your diet should be in low and saturated fat and cholesterol. Both of those things can um, reduce your, your uh, risk of heart disease, uh, heart attack, and stroke. So all these foods that we talk about right here causes this to happen inside your 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 arteries and it, ma it makes it a lot harder for your heart to pump uh, blood throughout your body so the buildup of gunk gets worse for all of us as we get older so the older you get the more important it is to keep an eye on what you eat to prevent from to prevent all this um, buildup inside your arteries <clears throat>